Okay, heart rate's up slightly. I am about to conduct my very first interview with a legit product designer. Anyway, so the person I'm interviewing today is called Pete Tasker. Now he's an award-winning product designer who has been in the industry for a very long time. The reason I know Pete is he actually studied product design with my dad back in the 70s. And he's been like the number one reason why I've gone to product design. Anyway, let's go see if we can find Pete. Hello Pete! The following footage is taken from over two hours worth of conversation where we touched on many, many subjects. But the two I'm going to focus on is first what product design looks like in New Zealand and second what AI could look like in the product design industry in the future. So, without further ado, here is my very interesting chin wag with Peter Tasker. So about last week I was I was in the workshop and I was talking to one of the third year mm. um, one of the third year um, guys who was going to be graduating at the end of this year. And anyway, he was saying like, yeah, I'm going to graduate, but I'm going to go study architecture after mm -hmm. this. And I said, oh, why are you going to go do that? And he just, he was simply like, well, there's no jobs for a product designer in New Zealand. Um, I think the scene in New Zealand has diminished, changed. What do you think the reason for that is? I guess in a word, China, and I'm not, <laughs> not, not saying that with any negative no. thing, that's just a reality. Yeah. Um, a personal project of mine mm. recently, I had it quoted in New Zealand from a really good company, plastics company. Yeah. Then I had it quoted from a high, very high quality Asian company. The component cost abroad was half Half. Half. Well, there we go. That's, the, that's yeah, it. which I can't really comprehend because the plastic material should be much the same anywhere. But you can't compete, you know, in New Zealand if a product can be made abroad for half the cost. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, but that's manufacturing. It doesn't yeah. necessarily impact on designers. Okay. And there's a whole lot of different approaches to, you know, deal with that, counter that. And one of them that I spoke to you about was taking control yourself, you know, being more of an entrepreneur with what you're doing. Okay. Rather than waiting and being dependent on companies which are diminishing, I would think, in manufacturing and design here. Okay. Um, take some control. Which, you know, thinking about that, what excites me, an idea that excites me there is, Maybe it'd be a postgraduate situation yeah. where you can get a cluster of various disciplines that are going through, let's say, AUT. You know, I don't know what the different subjects are, but you've got like design, you know, product and graphics, say. Yeah. And then you might have a, a business course there, uh, marketing, uh, legal, you know, com commerce, whatever. And maybe there could be teams that get together for a year to develop something yeah. simple and then go through Kickstarter and Amazon and so the, a real in-depth understanding of Kickstarter and how to make that work for you, you know, it's part of the course. Real understanding on um, Amazon and third-party logistics so you're not dependent on any manufacturer or um, more to the point company that's going to market your product. Yeah. What technologies, like, what, what's like one of the big technologies that you think will really change sort of in the next five, ten years that will change sort of the, the landscape of product mm. design? Mm. And I think I was reading recently that like um, people in the know predicting when artificial intelligence will surpass, so say, the collective intelligence of us. Mm. And I think the figures that were coming out were like 2040, 2050 or something like that. What, what would be the role of the designer, you know, if artificial intelligence can do so much? Or do you, do you see it more as a tool, I guess, that we would use? I'd like to think it would be a tool still, uh, you know, with that human uh, sensitivity mm. uh, in command, driving it. So you just sort of say, well, I want to design a, a pair of secateurs. Here's all the secateurs that have been uh, previously sold. Mm. These are people's comments about it, and maybe even the system goes out and asks gardeners, without a person even intervening, 
you know, what is your input wow, on this? Awesome, yeah. And um, what would you like? And um, it does an arrangement, and there may be new materials or whatever, and presents that without maybe any input. <laughs> I don't know. Does that make us obsolete? <laughs> but I can, I can, I mean, it's, all, it's perfectly conceivable. Yeah, no, yeah. I definitely so agree. Where do you fit? It's probably that creative thing. It's like that's largely going to be based on existing knowledge and precedent. It's not going to be that fresh new creative angle. So there's plenty of examples, like I'm just thinking of um, GoPro. Yeah. I remember reading uh, quite a number of years ago when it said, the headline was, what do you think is the world's highest selling camera by, by numbers, volume? And it was GoPro. I hadn't even heard of it before. This is a long time ago, before okay. it was even widely known. And that, I think it was just some young guy who put it together, you know, talking about artificial intelligence. It probably wouldn't even think to make that leap about some small, low cost, working out of the box that you can clamp on here and there. You know, so that's probably more of a human leap than sort of an okay. artificial intelligence yeah. leap. Yeah. So a big thank you to Pete for taking time out of his day to do the interview with me. And I hope you guys liked it. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. At the moment, I'm actually on semester break, which is so nice. So relaxing. But, there's been some really, really exciting developments in regards to the videos that I can be able to share with you, hopefully in the next video. So stay tuned, and I will see you then. Goodbye.